my ex-wife was a special kind of lady, with that almost unbelievable type of crazy you only see in movies. When she cheats one too many times, has me arrested on false charges, and kicks me out of my home. It was time, to enter vengeance mode. Warning. The following story, can be upsetting to cheaters. <laughs> my ex-wife was a special kind of lady with that almost unbelievable type of crazy, you only see in movies. There was a matching crazy sexy time drive with it too though. I had caught her cheating multiple times over the few years we were married, as well as doing some pretty hard forbidden candies, if you know what I mean, while I traveled for work, and she stayed at home to watch her two kids from a previous marriage and our child. I chose to believe the I'll change stuff too many times, foolishly. Mostly because her older two were like my own, their father had passed from cancer while they were still young. And also because she had my child, and I didn't want her growing up in a broken home like I did. Opportunity presented itself for a fresh start with a relocation far away from the rat hole she grew up in, with all her connections and bad habits of her past. We agree to move the family there to take a nice promotion, and give her a chance to get in a new environment and work towards change, she didn't. Fast forward a year and much is still the same as it was. She had taken up redoing furniture to try and sell it instead of getting a real job, which meant spending a lot of time making runs to a local store, that resold the donated innards of houses that were being remodeled. There she met. Let's call him, Javier. She even introduced me to him on one of the visits as the helpful associate, who always helps her load up the heaviest stuff she bought into her truck. Needless to say, my slimy sense was tingling. At this point I had this gut feeling every time she found someone new, she was going to eventually cheat on me with. She was mid-thirties and afraid to get old and undesirable, so she would pick out guys about 10 years younger so she could still think she had it. Javier fit the bill, and also oddly looked similar to her deceased husband. Roll forward another three months and the arguing was getting too much for me. She also started, insinuating that she would lie to CPS that I was actually doing things to her kids, so I would never see my daughter again, or purposefully inflict harm on herself and threatened to say it was me. By this time, I was smart enough to start secretly video recording this stuff with my phone, so I could avoid major issues down the road, it ultimately saved me and won me full custody in the divorce, but that's for another time. A week later, we fought just prior to Thanksgiving. Not only one of my favorite holidays, but we were all completely alone in terms of family except each other. She started the fight as a way to go spend it with Javier's family. I wasn't aware anything had started on that front yet. Her oldest kids were accustomed to these crazy acts by now and she didn't fear them telling me. My daughter was only two. A couple days later, I found out, after spending a lonesome Thanksgiving with my hungry man turkey dinner, what really happened. The fight was huge. I was done and she knew she had gone too far. I was filing for divorce on Monday, it was Saturday. She was able to take one of my texts I sent, after she pulled over on a four-lane busy road with our youngest, so she could kick me out and walk four miles home, and convince law enforcement to arrest me to get me out of the house for the night. Our city has 24-7 judges though, and I was out by noon on Sunday on $100 bail as it was a nothing charge. She thought I was gone till Monday at minimum. I didn't call home. Just took an Uber. I show up and lo and behold, Javier had come to spend the night. At this point, it was laughable and I knew what she was capable of, so I video recorded before I even entered the house. He left, then I left as the kids at school coming Monday. Monday, I file for divorce. Tuesday, I appear in court for my initial hearing for the arrest over the weekend. She's requested a temporary restraining order on me at the hearing, and the court's granted until the real trial. I was forced out of my home and also forced to keep paying all the bills while the divorce went on, not for food though, this was my lawyer's advice. I was given six hours on Wednesday, by the court, to get as much of my stuff out of the house as I could. I was leaving that same day for a multi-week out of town job too, so I couldn't really take a lot. Anything I left behind, I was at risk of never getting again. Now, I definitely needed work clothes and some street clothes, but I could maybe only take two to three suitcases of things at best. Cue the petty revenge. There's something you need to know. Over the four years we had dated and being married, we had a hobby you might find a bit strange. We accumulated quite a large collection of toys. It was a collection of somewhere in the ballpark of $3,000 to $4,000. And most of it was kept in a big trunk that looked like a magician's case. Well, that stuff was mine just as much as it was hers. I had bought it all for her. And she loved this stuff, with or without others' involvement. 
She kept her favorites hidden in different places though like her closet inside a shoe rack. Like I said, it was strange. I packed what I really wanted in about an hour and a half. Spent the next two hours searching for all her hidden favorites. I cleaned that place out if anything explicit and tossed it all in the large trunk. I left with time to spare in the bed of my truck loaded with my work gear, some suitcases, and her special trunk. I drove about five hours to get to the hotel of the job I was going on, and after I checked in, I saw the big green dumpster back in the corner. I pulled my truck around, backed up, and hoisted the 80 pounds plus monster into the bin and smiled. It wasn't a lot, but it felt really good to have gotten at least one leg up on her, as I knew she would be furious to not have anything to help her de-stress from her life about to be falling apart. Side, note, the case was eventually dropped against me, when she wrote a letter to the district attorney stating I was fine, and she wasn't afraid of me. That's the only way they'd drop it, so she could get my help with the kids as she struggled to find work. I wasn't going to violate that temporary restraining order for any reason. I ultimately won full custody of my daughter as well when all was said and done. I have so many more stories from this terrible marriage if you guys like the above. Please continue, I want to know more. She seems like a real character. She had you arrested on false charges? I'd sure like to know why it's acceptable to do that as a divorce tool, with zero repercussions for lying to do it. I've long wondered the same. As I said, I walked back to the house. There was an officer just down the block from my house before I got there waiting at a Walgreens. He saw me and stopped me. He asked what was going on. I told him about the fight and showed the messages. We chatted about half an hour. Finally, he said it all seemed good and asked what my plans were. I told him I was going home to get my bag for work and leave for the weekend, so I could file for divorce at the start of the week and be done with it all. He said that sounded best. He offered to give me a ride to the house. I declined and said that he should go on up and explain what's happening while I walked the last little bit, then he could witness me do my thing and leave. But unfortunately that wasn't the end of it. She apparently lost her mind when they said they were going to let me go. By the time I got there, like 10 minutes later, I asked if I was free to enter and have them follow me. They told me to hold up. And there were additional cops pulling up. I spent the next hour and a half waiting to hear what was going on. Eventually, they came out and asked me to put my hands behind my back. And for those who are wondering, the text message in question said something like, I'm done with this crap. It's time you suffer the consequences of your actions. Looking back, extremely poor word choice against a bipolar narcissist. I should have elaborated what I meant, which was the fact that we were getting a divorce, she would be forced out of the house, and I was going to fight for full custody of my daughter. I have never written a vaguely worded text since. I am so sorry that your ex-wife put you through all this, but I'm glad that you got a little revenge on her. Also, very glad you got custody of your child. Did you get custody of her other children? As a woman, it really annoys me when women cheat on their partners. Not only does it negatively impact on their spouse who is trying to make the marriage work, but then you have the potential of STDs being transmitted. I know cheating can and does happen by either gender. I truly hope that she regrets cheating on you. The way she is going, she will likely face a lonely future as once her looks fade, she will find it more likely difficult to flit from partner to partner. The fact that she filed false charges on you shows how incredibly toxic she is. I am glad that you hopefully will no longer have to deal with her in the future and will live your best life without her. Take care of yourselves and all the best for the future. I unfortunately did not. The oldest was 14, almost 15, by the time this all broke down and had learned all her mom's tricks. She only called when she needed something. Her middle daughter I raised since she was almost four, so she definitely only knew me as her dad as he passed away when she was just three. She was nine the last I saw her. She was allowed to visit for about six months after the divorce. Sometimes even on the off weeks when I didn't have my biological daughter. But that all ended when the ex tried a dirty tactic with CPS to try and regain custody of our daughter, and failed. The middle daughter even asked to live with me permanently and her mom refused. We haven't gotten to see each other or speak in over a year. But the last time I saw her, her mom had went inside after I dropped my kid off. She was in the passenger seat and called for me and said she loved me. I'll still be here when she's 18 and free of her mom if she still wants me as her dad. Are you my brother? I mean, there is enough detail here for me to confidently say that you aren't, but if you had been a little more vague I would really wonder. 
I'm very glad you were able to get full custody of your daughter. My niece hasn't seen her mom in years. Sad that so many others have experienced similar. And thank you. Glad your brother got out too. Why would she need toys, if she had Javier? This woman is the definition of insatiable. She should have been polyamorous. Later found out Javier couldn't get the job done how she needed. Apparently he was very emasculated by being confronted with being incapable of matching her needs. Can't name specifics here unfortunately. Firstly, a huge thanks to everyone who showed support for and enjoyed my last post. I've been asked to write some more of the crazy things that happened in my marriage. This one is another tale that involves some petty revenge, so I'll keep this one here before writing others in the subs they belong in. Let me preface this story with the fact that I know I was dumb and stayed too long. The more of these I write, the dumber I'll look. About six months prior to moving away from my promotion, SEP 2018, with the family, my ex-wife had gotten pretty bad from a delusion standpoint with the whole seeing ghosts and demon stuff. She was supposedly scared to be at home alone with the kids. My job at the time required for me to be gone for periods from a week up to several months at a time. And that could have been alleviated some if she would have gotten a job to contribute financially, but she refused to take a low paying job after having her nursing license revoked by the state. I should have been more vocal, but I wasn't. I was paid well, and up to this point, to my knowledge, she had been faithful. She was raising the three kids at home and used her free time during the day to work on rehab projects for the little house we had bought. One day, I come back from a job in the spring of 2018 and her cousin by marriage, no blood relation, let's call him John, was there. She gave me a quick summary of them growing up together, how he had come to help her haul something back from the hardware store, etc. The guy seemed alright, but she seemed overly nervous about him while he was playing it totally cool. This is also the first time she ever introduced me to one of her targets by the way. Either way, he hung out for about 15 minutes to not have it be weird and then excused himself and left. I didn't see or hear about him again for several months. He apparently secretly stopped by quite often when she was feeling extra exorcist-ish. To jump back a bit further and explain where the angel slash demon paranoia came from, my ex had birthed our daughter in late 2016. And by spring 2017 she was not happy with the weight she had gained and also was suffering from some mild postpartum. This led to her falling back into her narcotics use to quickly lose weight. I had known about her previous pill addictions, but not about the harder stuff till after I caught her with it late that spring. A huge fight ensued. She promised to quit and go to NA, I accepted, and we tried to move on. Most of the rest of 2017 was her continually slipping into the use of this stuff and a prolonged manic episode. It finally got to the point that I was ready to leave it things didn't change, and everything settled down around Christmas 2017 and was actually pretty solid through mid-2018. I think her manic episode chilled out around that Christmas. Back to summer 2018 though, John was popping up a lot in our daily conversations out of nowhere. He was coming over and helping do a lot of physical labor, ha, huh, working on the house with my ex. At least once during the week and almost every weekend. Always when I was gone for jobs. He never was around when I was home. Strange. Eventually, I caught them together and the blame for it was directed at me, because I was always gone and never around to help. Mind you what I said above about the finances. If she worked even a crappy job, I could have afforded to be home another two to three months out of the year. And funnily enough, John turned out to be unemployed too, so they had all the time in the world to play happy couple while I worked 80 plus hour weeks on the road about 40 to 44 weeks a year. I was boiling furious. I filed for divorce for the first time and she flipped out. Begged and pleaded. Said it was done and over and how sorry she was. This is what led, in part, to us moving away for the promotion and getting a fresh start in the fall of 2018. By summer of the next year, 2019, her phone was constantly blowing up with texts from someone and she had them in her phone as Jennifer and Jacob, names changed. She said her aunt back home was very ill, and that was another cousin that was keeping her updated on her condition. That ended up being a lie. Now, she wasn't tech savvy in the slightest, and when she changed iPhones, she had me back hers up on the family computer and move everything over to the new one. The texts kept coming, and I eventually had enough suspicions that used a program to pull the backup open and dump her text history. As I read through, I discovered that Jennifer and Jacob was really just Jacob. And there weren't any talks of her aunt going on at all. What there was though was a ton of flirting going on. 
questionable pics and videos flying back and forth. I confronted her on the findings after processing it all for about a week. I was heartbroken to find out that nothing had changed. Of course, I was the bad guy for not trusting her and breaking her privacy by reading the messages. She filled me in on who he really was, which was John's adopted brother who lived a few hours away. She didn't have an explanation this time as to why she did it. But she claimed to have went to see him at some point and tried to hook up, but apparently he wasn't able to perform that night, so they never managed to go all the way. My new job was in a manager's position running a division at my company, and I was home every night. She would say she was going somewhere for a couple days and needed a break from the responsibilities of a full-time stay-at-home mom. Usually, it was to a family member's place which all lived a minimum of three hours away, depending which direction you went. At this point, I didn't know when it would finally be over, but I knew it was coming. The only reason I didn't fold right then was the financial position we were in. We had overextended ourselves on the new home we purchased, based on the idea that she would become gainfully employed after we moved, which never happened. We were living paycheck to paycheck on a mid-dollar 100k salary, all the credit cards were maxed out, and I couldn't figure out a way to escape without bankruptcy, the route I ended up having to take. There was so much else going on in terms of drama and arguing, that this was just another blip on the radar. I was mentally defeated up until the events happened from the previous post. Those events, for anyone who didn't go read their first, triggered me filing for divorce. Early into 2020, the divorce was going about how one would expect dealing with a spouse like this one, atrociously. I was broken down and looking back at how much of a joke I had let myself become. One night, deep in those thoughts and about half a fifth of Crown Royal, I wondered what this other guy's life was like. I looked him up. He had a family. Two kids. Beautiful wife. Perfect looking from the outside on Facebook. Jacob's wife looked like a genuinely sweet and caring person. It got me wondering if she knew what had happened, or if he skated by without a scratch. Jennifer didn't have a Facebook, but she did have an Instagram. I sent her a message that gently explained what I had discovered several months prior. I wasn't sure she'd ever respond. When she did, it was even more sad that she said she had known of my ex and had suspicions, but could never prove it and wished I had told her sooner. She then told me she also knew that my ex and John were dating, because my ex and I had gotten divorced, which was categorically untrue. But she said that's what John told her. And lastly, Jennifer said that Jacob did this sort of thing a lot, but always stopped short of hooking up. No clue why, I guess guilt maybe? Jennifer wanted some proof, so she could believe what I was saying and also as evidence in her soon-to-be divorce. I gathered up the exported texts, videos, and pics and sent them over to her. I warned her the texts, would hurt a lot more than the sexy time texts. After reading she agreed. I apologized, but said at least she knew the truth before she wasted too much time on him. We never spoke again after that. Within a week, Jacob apparently got my number from my ex and he started blowing me up with texts. He said I played my hand well and congratulations. His marriage was over and all he had to blame for it was himself. I largely ignored him other than to say he should have respected what he had and not also contributed to destroying the life I had. I blocked him after that. I wasn't out to destroy his life, but rather to make his wife aware of the circle of scum we were both trapped in and let her handle it how she wished. It was a somber victory, but a victory nonetheless. Obligatory legal clarification on the transmittal of the graphic photos and videos to Jennifer. My ex tried to nail me for sending revenge photos to Jacob's ex. I had my attorney that was handling my criminal case review this claim, and he shrugged it off. Nowhere in any of the photos or videos was anything that could identify Jacob or my ex. Due to that fact, he said it didn't hold weight and it wouldn't go anywhere. It ultimately did not go anywhere. Bonus, there's a lot more to John's story with my ex that I haven't covered, due to not being relevant to the ending of this one. Nice that you blew up his world, but I feel like your wife deserved the brunt of your revenge. I hope she got her comeuppance too. She got hers for sure. That's for another story though. Terribly unfortunate that you had to go through this. I wish you the greatest healing. For the rest of us going through similar issues, I thank you for sharing your story, it helps people experiencing the same kind of bad people plaguing our lives. This is why I haven't remarried after my husband died. People can be so crazy. I want to know what happened to her kids. You never mentioned adopting them, so I assume you had to leave them with her. I think it was covered in the last post's comments, but I know there were a lot. I couldn't adopt them but definitely would have. 
she ultimately lost our daughter to me with the full custody and moved to Las Vegas with her older two, and the new baby she got stuck with from cheating. Whole other story there though. Hey there, you got till the end. You're the one I think about when I'm creating these episodes. I appreciate you and hope you enjoyed this one. Did this revenge story tickle your funny bone, or did it make you shiver in sympathy? Spill your tea, because I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to smack the like button into oblivion. And see you, in the next one.